The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel as written to us by Matthew. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of King Herod, behold, wise men from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is this newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where this Christ was to be born. And they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, because from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the wise men secretly and ascertained from them the exact time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem, And he said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word, that I may go and do him homage too. After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them, until it came and it stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star. They entered the house. They saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and they did him homage. And then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. There's probably two ways you can receive a gift. You can say, doesn't this make me special? Aren't I now important? Look at me. And the gift stops right there and it doesn't bear much fruit. A more mature gift does what we call today re-gifting. That when they receive a gift, they know this does not make them so much special, although it does that too. But it's not just a chosenness or a private election or choice of that person. It's a responsibility to hand it on. And we're going to see in all three of the readings, it's actually rather clear that there's the giving of a gift and the saying that the gift is not just for those who it's given to. So it starts with Isaiah the prophet saying that, uh, yes, the Jewish people have been gifted by God. God has revealed himself to them. But it says this is for all the nations. It's not to make you into a private country club. The second reading... Paul says that, uh, in fact, this circle of God's revelation is ever widening. And yes, again, the gift was started with the Jewish people, but now the Gentiles have been included. Now, you know, most of the people didn't agree with Paul at that point. And that's why Judaism and Christianity became two different religions. We are the fruit of those who said, whatever God is doing, it's not just for the Jews, it's for everybody, or the Gentiles. That's you and me. Although there might be a few Jewish people here, all the rest of us are Gentiles. The way we used to call people non-Catholics. And exactly what the Jews did is what we Catholics did. We repeated them and imitated them perfectly. We strutted around saying, see, we are chosen. We're the one true religion. No, a gift is not to make you into a private country club. It's so you can hand on the gift to everybody else. 
It's not a sign of specialness as much as a sign of responsibility. That if you have truly been gifted, then in fact you bear a burden to tell others about the gift. Any of you who are in recovery programs, you know they call this the 12th step. And you don't have the gift, in fact, at any depth or any truth until you share it with someone else. That just seems to be psychologically, theologically true. I know myself, because I've been a preacher now for 42 years, uh, it's mainly when I'm trying to teach the gospel to other people that I get it myself. <laughs> when I have the responsibility of saying it to you, then I go back to my own house and say, oh my God, do I believe it myself? <laughs> and sometimes it's worrisome because I'm not sure I do believe it myself. It's just nice words to say and to impress you. And then I say, do I live it myself? That's the real leap of faith. That's when the gospel becomes actual good news. Then we have this most amazing story that we read only on this day, this feast of the Epiphany. The Epiphany means manifestation. This is the day that we celebrate the manifestation of the mystery to everybody, not just to Mary and Joseph in the stable, but in fact, Matthew stretches it pretty much as far as he can go. He has these three, well, actually it doesn't say three. Did you ever notice that? It just says wise men. There could have been five. Could have been two. There could have been ten. And you know what? It never says they're kings. Did you notice that? (laughs) Funny how myths develop. Many people think it's the feast of the three kings. It never mentions kings at all. It says three wise men from the east. The assumption of most scholars is that they would have been from somewhere around Persia, certainly not Jews, uh, outsiders, not believers by any criteria. Today, you know, we think they're from Iraq or Iran or, you know, some terribly foreign, dangerous people. Or maybe we'd think of them as New Agers, not Christian at all. And here, these utter outsiders become the ones who risk the journey, as Jeff said before, go outside their comfort zone and lead the, or follow the star wherever it leads them. That's pretty amazing. And the message is very clear that whatever God is doing, He's not doing it to create an in-group and an out-group. And yet, that has been the history of religion. Catholics imitated the Jews, and evangelicals imitate the Catholics. And we each think, yeah, we're special. We're saved. We're better than you are. You're better if you do it, if you live it, if you follow it, if you go outside your comfort zone and love the stranger and the neighbor and the outsider as yourself. Then you have not just been gifted, but you've re-gifted, which means you have the gift in the first place. So it's a good way to begin the year, to recognize that our God is not an exclusionary God, a God who creates boundaries, not accidentally, This week is a week of National Immigration Week where we are reminded that there are other people on the other side of boundaries, but boundaries that we have created. They're not created by God, they're created by us. And so we have to ask, is God on the other side of the boundary? I saw a wonderful movie this week that two wonderful women here gave me called La Misma Luna, the same moon. And a beautiful story of a little Mexican boy who's trying to find his mother and has to risk coming across the border and is aware that, you know what? It's the same moon on this side as it is on the other side. Because there's only one God, 
There's only one love. And either we all share it or there is no love.